Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Ulitin natin. Good afternoon po. Doon, parang English na palang ating 3 p.m. service. Pero siyempre, nag-warm up pa lang tayo. Again, uh, magandang hapon po. My name is Brian. I'm one of the pastors here in Victory. And dito po sa Victory, we are for two things. To honor God and make disciples. And you know, it's so good to be here in church uh, every Sunday, worshiping God together. And sino sa na-appreciate nyo po yung music team natin leading us into worship. Indeed, it was a powerful time of worship, encountering God. And aren't you glad na we have volunteers week in, week out who would serve dito sa, sa church natin, sa simbahan natin to make everything organized and ano yun, uh, meron lang order, di ba? Yung usher natin na minsan, di ba, parang sinisigaw-sigawan natin, naiirit tayo, pinag i tayo sa likod. Pero aren't you glad, di ba, may order dito sa simbahan natin from parking to the end of the worship, di ba, we have order. Di ba, pwede ba natin palakpakan yung mga volunteers natin. We just want to appreciate all of you. And when I think about order, I think it's something innate in us na gusto natin maayos ang lahat, di ba? Imagine kung yung upuan natin dito, di ba? Nasa gilid lang, kanya-kanya tayong kuwa dito, tas kanya-kanyang peso tayo dito. Parang, it doesn't make sense, right? Kaya nga, I saw this picture online uh, talking about order, di ba? Parang, imagine, minsan kasi pag, I don't know kung saan uh, uh, part ng government natin, minsan dahil yung pila ang gulo, para magkaroon ng order, di ba? Ang ginawa nila is yung mga chinyelas yung nakapila, di ba? And ang sarap tingnan, di ba? Na hindi nagsisingitan sa pila, kilala mo yung chinyelas na yan, sa akin yan, sa so ako yung susunod, and all that. Kasi, sabi ko nga, gusto natin yung merong order. And it's innate in us na when we see something, alam mo yun, uh, magulo, hindi tama, parang nai-stress ka, or alam mo yun, parang napufrustrate ka, na parang, ano ba naman ito, hindi man lang inayos, just like this picture. <laughs> di ba? Wrinkles. Yung ba, hindi mag Tama naman, pastor, wrinkles, di ba? Parang doon siya nang galing, wrinkles, kasi kulubot-kulubot, ganyan, di ba? Right? Or maybe ito, parang for, for me, parang it doesn't make sense na merong poste sa gitna. Di ba? Parang gumawa ng kalsada, sana man lang, di ba? Parang iniwas. Di ba parang yung mga OC dito, di ba parang OC, yung parang nai-stress ka, di ba pag nakita mo yung cabinet nyo, di ba pag yung asawa mo kumuha ng damit, nagugulo lagi, tapos ikaw na, di ba parang for how many years lagi na lang ganun, inaayos mo yung damit niya, meron bang ganun dito? Or ako lang yon yung mga miska, di ba? Di ba bro, parehas tayo, or eto, di ba parang eto, di ba paano ka naman magto-toilet kung ganito, di ba? <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung ano yung tinatakpan, di ba? Yung privacy, yung privacy mo ba o yung mukha mo yung kailangan matakpan, di ba? Siguro sa lalaki walang epekto, pero imagine this. Or eto last, di ba? Parang eto, di ba yung mga grammar Nazi natin dito. Road work ahead. Please apologize. Alam mo yung pag dumaan ka dyan, ay sorry po, pakikiraan lang po. Di ba yung mga ganon? Right? Parang it doesn't make sense. You know why we want things in order? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14.33, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. And when we look at those pictures, yes, it's innate in us na gusto natin maayos. Itong mga bagay na to, katawa-tawa pag, ay, okay lang, parang nakakatawa naman, di mo lang inayos. But the question is this, paano kaya kung yung marriage na natin yung medyo problematic? Hello? Paano kaya yung parenting natin yung problematic? And majority of us, produkta tayo ng ganito, broken family, di ba? Na parang growing up, lagi na lang nakikita mo, nag-aaway yung magulang mo, nagsisigawan, nagbabatuhan ng, ng plato, kulang na lang, magsaksakan sa harap nyo, di ba? Or maybe, eto, sa finances natin, medyo may disorder ka, Kung paano mo i-handle yung budget. Alam mo yung feeling na, alam mo yun, yung lagi na lang pecha di peligro. Yung darating yung sweldo mo, pero para makita mo, ay may sweldo na ako, tas kinabukasan wala na. Worse, minsan, mangungutang tayo para pambayad natin ng utang. Tapos mangungutang ulit pagbayad ng utang. Di ba alam niyo yung usong-usong ngayon, yung isasanla yung ATM? So parang di mo alam, hindi, hindi, ganito talaga yung buhay. Right? That's why when we look at our nation itself, di ba parang, parang there's this too much chaos, too much disorder, Thinking na maayos pa ba? Di ba? Mag-e-election. Tapos pag tinignan mo, di ba? Parang sino kaya iboboto ko dito? Parang, parang Lord, give me wisdom and discernment kung sino ba talaga dapat yung iboto ko. 
And if you're going to ask me or yung church natin, we don't, kumbaga, support or hindi natin gagawin yung mag-black voting tayo dito. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Bakit? Bawat isa sa atin dito, binigyan ng wisdom and discernment ng Panginoon kung sino yung boboto natin. But what's interesting, when we look at the population, did you know that 21.6% of the population here in the Philippines lives below the national poverty line in 2015. So 21.6% daw po yung naghihirap dito sa bansa natin. So yung mga kanina, tinatawanan natin, pero itong mga seryosong bagay na to, these are the things that we can't tolerate. We can't just accept. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, hindi, ganyan na talaga tayo mga, mga Pinoy. Why? What we tolerate, we will never change. At the same time, yes, we don't just tolerate, but we don't just cope with it. What we don't want to happen is, sige, kakayanin ko to, susubukan ko to. Alam mo yung patch solution? Na minsan, as Filipinos, ang tayo, dahil resilient tayo, magaling tayo sa ganun. Alam nyo yun, di ba, yung binahan na tayo, nag na, pero makikita mo yung mga picture natin, nakangiti pa rin tayo, naliligo sa baha, and all that. Why? Kasi di ba, sabi natin, di, we can always see positive in this situation. Pero dahil minsan sobrang resilient tayo, instead of doing something about the problem, we just cope with it, tapos tapon ka pa rin ng basura dito, ganto, 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 tapos pag nagbaha, magre ka, pero masaya ka, tapos paulit-ulit na lang yan. You would just cope with it, go with it, paulit-ulit na lang. Kaya nga yung iba sa atin dito, ngiti-ngiti na lang, pero we know that deep inside of our life, there's something broken, something missing, something is disorder. Just like what this actor said, si Robin Williams, sabi niya, all it takes is a beautiful fake smile to hide an injured soul and they will never notice how broken you really are. Kasi tayo, Pinoy tayo, di ba? Parang we like our smile, di ba? Parang tayo nga daw yung nation na lagi na lang nakangiti kahit problemado na. So this afternoon, as we talk about the Word of God, yung text na binasa natin dito, I hope we won't hide our brokenness with those fake smile. But the question is this, ano kaya yung gagawin natin? Are we just gonna tolerate it, the situation, accept? Hindi ganito kasi talaga yung marriage namin, nagsasama na lang kami para sa anak namin. Hello? Ang nangyayari niya, nagiging apathetic tayo. Wala ka ng pakialam. Or on the other side of the boat, yes, you won't tolerate it, you're gonna try to cope with the situation. Cope up with it. Hindi, kaya yan, patch-up solution, band-aid solution. Kaya ang nangyayari ngayon, hindi talaga na-address yung problema. So this afternoon, we're gonna answer this question, how does God bring order to this disordered world? Ang tanong, paano nga ba, di ba? So as we continue on this series foretold, actually, nasa ikalawang linggo na po natin itong series na to, and ang goal po ng series na to is to, kumbaga, see yung essence po nung pagdating ng Messiah ni Jesus Christ sa lens ni Isaiah. Bakit? Even from the very beginning, yung Panginoon po natin may plano siya. And what's interesting, the book, yung si Prophet Isaiah, when he wrote and when he prophesied about the coming of the Messiah, it was 700 years before. So ibig sabihin, in their state back then, there was disorder also, pero meron na silang promise na pinanghawakan na may darating 700 years later. And this is something very relevant to all of us. Why? Kung sa nation nila, sobrang disorder yung moral nila, sobrang uh, perverted lahat ng, ng ginagawa nila, yung pag-worship nila, sa panahon din natin ngayon, ganun din naman eh. Di ba nga? Pag tinignan natin yung paligid natin, sobrang broken lahat. So tayo naman ang titignan natin, as Isaiah look forward 700 years later pagdating ni Jesus Christ, tayo naman we're gonna look back. Ilalagay natin yung pwesto natin sa posisyon ni Isaiah para makita natin, okay, paano nga ba gagawin ni God na magkakaroon siya ng order? Paano niya aayusin yung mga sitwasyon sa buhay natin? But to give us a, a summary of the book of Isaiah, ito po siya. Alam kasi natin yung nature ng prophecy, di ba? Yung prophecy po, uh, it's a forecast, kaya foretold yung series natin. The first uh, 39 chapters ng prophecy na to talks about the judgment and character of God. And this is something really powerful. Why? Because He is a just God, kailangan ng justice. Kailangan mapakita niya yung righteousness niya. Kaya pag, pinasa, pag binasa mo yung first 39 chapters, the message is about how God is condemning the wrong practice of His people. 
But at the same time, chapters 40 onwards talks about the comfort and the redemption. So the nature of the prophecy is this. It talks about the judgment, the character, the comfort, and the redemption. For what purpose? To reinstate the covenant of God to His people. Dahil sobrang mahal niya lang talaga yung tao niya, yung kinreate niya, kahit nasa gitna sila na pagre nila, He will send prophets just like Isaiah to reinstate His covenant. To tell His people na kahit na malayo ka, mahal kita. Pero ngayong hapon na to, we're gonna focus on these four verses and we're gonna see how God brings order. And what's interesting, ito pong four verses na aralin natin ngayong hapon. Then sa four verses na yan, three times na mention po yung word na justice. And I believe it's very critical for all of us here in order for us to appreciate how God brings order in this world is for us to see the beauty of His justice. Why? In our time today, we define justice by paying the penalty dun sa ginawa na consequence, di ba? Hindi, dapat hustisya lang, dapat bayaran mo yung kasalanan mo. Kaya nga ngayon, ang debate, dapat ba may death penalty and this? Kasi bakit? May na-rape, may ganito nangyari, pinatay. So parang kailangan lang ng hustisya. So kung, kung ganyan ang ginawa sa'yo, dapat ganyan din yung ginawa sa kanya. Pero when we look at these verses, we get to see ano ba talaga yung definition ng justice. What's interesting, di ba, yan yung, ano natin, yung picture. Pag nasa husgado ka, di ba, tapos may babaeng naka, ang tawag doon, naka-blindfold. Why? It, ano, kumbaga, it connotes or it communicates yung balance. Kailangan equal yung hostesya. Walang pinapanigan, right? And in this sense, sa aaralin po natin, sa time kasi ngayon natin, sobrang relative na injustice. Right? People would uh, fight for uh, gender equality. Dapat lahat ng pagparehas kami nagmamahalan, kahit parehas kami ng gender, dapat pwede kami ikasal. Bakit? Kasi relative na justice sa mata nila, asa ng justisya ay eh, nagmamahalan naman kami. But when we look at the scripture, yun ba talaga ibig sabihin ng justice? When we look at the scripture, ito po yung ibig sabihin ng justice. To set things right, bring things in order, and establish things as they ought to be. So ibig sabihin, yung outworking po ng justice, it has something to do with the righteousness of God. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na may hustisya pero wala yung righteousness ng Panginoon. Bakit? Because He is the standard. He defines what the law is. Dapat siya yung magbibigay. Kaya nga dapat, para ma-experience natin itong justice na to, we need to conform to the righteousness of God. Diba? You having the right standing with God. That's why in verse 1, ito na yung sinabi. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. This is Isaiah, one of the major prophets in the Bible, prophesying about the coming of the Messiah. And God inspired him to share this word. And during this time, it was God the Father who was speaking through Isaiah. Ang sinasabi niya, Behold my servant. To behold is to look, to focus, to observe, to contemplate, to gaze upon who Jesus is. Remember in the New Testament, anong sabi ni ano? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You have to look up to Jesus. First question to all of us here. Ano mga bagay na nagka-capture ng isipan natin at ng puso natin? As we are been looking and searching to make things in order sa buhay natin, ano kaya yung nagbe-behold ng mind mo na, ay hindi, pag ito lang yung nangyari, siguro magiging okay na kami. Ito yung sabi ng word ni God, behold, look on to who? To Jesus, the servant of the Father. What's interesting, I like that description. When he came here, he was in a humble position. Yun yung sinasabi ni Pat kanina. Hindi sinabing, Behold, the King, the Son of the Father. Pwede namang ganun, di ba? Nung dumating si Jesus dito, nagbukas yung heaven, tapos nagkantahan uh, yung angel, tapos kita lahat ng tao, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Tapos sinabi ni Jesus, Repent from the kingdom of God is near. Pwede namang ganun. Pero bakit kaya imagine, tatay niya, karpentero, 
pinanganak siya sa manger, it speaks of his humility. But not only that, ano sabi dyan? Whom I uphold. Ibig sabihin, the Father sustains His servant or His Son, Jesus Christ, to do His will. And not only that, my chosen, nag-iisa lang, pinili niya. And my soul delights. Even before His ministry, wala pa siya dito sa earth, sa mundo. The Father was already pleased with the Son. Wala pa siyang ginagawa. And not only that, I have put my spirit upon Him. Talking about Trinity. Kung di ka naniniwala sa Trinity, here we can see it. The Father describing the Son and talking about the Holy Spirit. And ano yung purpose? He will bring forth justice to the nations. I like this promise. Why? Kasi hindi lang siya para sa mga Hudyo. Hindi lang siya para sa chosen people of God, yung mga Israelites. Ibig sabihin nations, ibig sabihin kasama po tayo ngayon. Kasama tayo mga Gentile or Gentile. Na kahit di ka Israelite, because of Jesus Christ, we get to be part of His kingdom. So here in this verse, what we can see is this. Because Jesus, the servant whom God the Father upholds, and He is the chosen one, Christ is the only one who can set everything in order. Talking about justice. Naghanap tayo ng mustisya, right? We want to make things right. We want to make things in order. We need to understand that it's only in Christ. And to experience Christ's fixing, we are to trust His leading. Gusto mong ma-experience kung paano gagawin ni God? Aayusin ni God yung marriage mo, yung relationship mo sa anak mo, yung business mo. Could it be that you're one step away from trusting and believing kung ano yung sinasabi ng word niya kaysa sa sinasabi ng mundo? Eh bakit? Hindi, kasi ito yung business practice sa, sa mundo. Dapat gawin ko to. Eh, kabalik ta rin yung sinasabi ng Panginoon. So ano mas paniniwalaan mo? Hello? Now in verse 2, here's what the Bible says. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. I like this. As the Messiah brings justice in this world, ito kung paano siya describe. Hindi siya yung magbibida-bida. Hindi siya yung maninigaw kagaya ng preacher nyo ngayon. Hindi pa o galit, okay? Passionate lang. Hindi siya yung parang i-abuse niya yung authority niya na parang magbago na kasi kayo, kayo mga mga kasalanan. He won't do that. He won't condemn you. He won't shoo you away. Hindi siya yung parang tatay mo na pag ang gulo-gulo niya sa bahay, magagalit siya, sisigawan ka. Hello? Or yung nanay natin na, alam mo yun, yung natapon mo lang yung tubig or nagalit ka dito, yung sigaw ng sigaw ka agad, yung alam mo yung, you know what I'm talking about, right? But nothing against our parents. We love them, we want to honor them. But because they're sinful people also, dahil makasalanan din sila, minsan, to exercise their authority, Para maging maayos lang kayo sa bahay, kasi nag-aaway kayo, magkakapatay, ano nga gawin? Sige, magpatayan kayo, di ba? <laughs> di ba? Sisigawan ka, tapos kayo ngayon, hala, galit na si nanay, baka patay na tayo na ito, mga ganon. But imagine with me for a moment, yung Panginoon, si Jesus, pagdating niya daw dito, kahit sobrang dami nating kasalanan, He has all the right to put judgment and wrath on us. Kaya nga may term, nakikidlatan niya tayo, di ba? Or pag nasa simbahan ka, masusunog ka, di ba? Pwede naman niya gawin yung matagal na siguro tayong sunog, pero hindi. Because the nature of His justice is not how the, bring, how the world brings justice. Nakadepende yung justice niya sa nature niya, kung sino siya. And He is yes, a just God, He is a righteous God, but He is also a loving God. And I like this. Because again, this gives us a picture of his humility. Bakit? Malapit na po yung election. Hindi po ako anti-government. Baka sabihin nyo, siguro tong pastor natin dito, anti-government or what, di ba? Ako lang to, uh, ang tawag doon, may term doon, parang naiinis ka lang. Tao rin po ako, nainis din po ako. Di ba yung minsan nakakainis, yung 
I'll be, ano, I'll be, mag-iingat ako dito, okay? Yung, alam niyo yung sa barangay nyo, or sa lugar nyo, na parang lahat na lang, may waiting shed na maliit, tapos sa taas mayroong malaking picture nung, nung politician, lahat na lang ng lamppost, may, may initial, di ba? Lahat na lang ng basketball court, may pangalan, di ba? You know what I'm talking about, right? So ngayon, pag nabago yung, 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 yung papalit na politician, eh, gibain lahat yan. Gusto ko yung initial ko. Ambulansya, kailangan nandun yung mukha niya. Right? Bakit? Siya ba yung savior dun sa may sakit? Alam mo yung parang it doesn't make sense. And me, as one of the pastors here, nagbabayad din po kami ng tax. And minsan nakakainis-isipin, di ba, tax naman natin yung binayad natin. No? Bakit kailangan yung mukha nila yung nakalagay dun? We live in a world na ganun yun na pag... Pag ikaw yung in position, dapat ikaw yung bida. Dapat you get the credit. Hindi kasi magaling po yung ano namin dito. Ganto, 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 di ba? E minsan ako nakakairita, di ba? Pag, pag, for some reason, I don't know kung meron sa inyo, pero uso yun, di ba? Yung, may mga kasadang sinisira kahit alam mong hindi naman kailangan sirain. <laughs> di ba? Kunyari, uh, March, o sirain natin to. Magulat, ay, ginagawa na naman to. Parang kahapon lang ginagawa. So gagawin, hukayin. Tapos, oh, gaganyan na naman, alalagay ng, ano, ng simento and all that. Habi mo, okay lang, ganda na ng kalsada dito, walang lumak. Tapos, after how many months, sisirain na naman. Tapos, pag tinanong mo, oh, bakit naman sinisira ito? Kasi may naiwan pong pala sa ilalim. Di ba, para alam mo yung ganun? May naiwan na pala. Pero, ang daming pwedeng ayusin, pero yung laging ayos na daanan, yun yung sinasira. Gets yung ano ko eh, no? yung, yung hurting ko. Ah. Mahal, mahal po natin yung Pilipinas, right? Passionate lang tayo. Okay? Ito ba sinabi yun? Ito kasi yung point ko, okay? Ito yung point ko. Minsan, pag sila may kailangan, kitang-kita mo kagad. Madaling lapitan. Close kayo. Kakamay pa yan, house to house. Ay, sige, oo, oh, sige, ganyan, 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 ganyan. Pero pag nandun na, pag ikaw na yung kailangan, pahirapan. Ah, mag-set ka ng schedule. Ah, sino ka ba? Kailangan mo na ng ID, voter's ID, o anong address mo, ganyan-ganyan. Ah, hindi ka po pwede dito kasi hindi ka nakarehistro. Right? But let me tell you this. Yung Diyos po natin, ibahin po natin siya. Yung mga tao na yon, we are so irritated with the reality na they should be exemplifying this, bringing justice in this nation, but aren't you glad si Jesus, si God, He is sovereign, He is in control, and He would bring justice dito sa mundong ginagalawan niya. Pero yung way niya po, hindi kagaya ng way sa mundong ito. Ano yung way niya? Jesus would set things right by coming in humility. He came in the form of a servant. Hinugasan niya yung paan ng mga disciples niya. Pwede namang ginawa niya, di ba? Mga bata, masahe. Pagod ako, paki, paki foots pa ako. Ang layo ng nilakad natin, ang layo ng pagod na pagod ako mag-ministry, nagpagaling ako ng maraming tao, nag-cast ako ng maraming demonyo. Kailangan paki masahe nga. Hindi. Ang heart nga is to serve. To serve. To set an example. He came here as a humble servant. You know why? As we see His humility, it gives us that confidence to approach Him freely. Ibig sabihin, dahil ito palang king na to, servant siya, humble siya, hindi mo kailangan mag-set ng appointment sa secretary na or kung whatever para lumapit sa kanya. Anytime you have an access to Him, He has opened everything for you and for me. So, ibig sabihin po, hindi nyo na kailangan lumapit minsan sa amin na pastor. Teka lang, hindi ako makalapit kay Lord. Baka kailangan kay pastor muna ako. Baka ano intend siya. Hindi po, ganun. Magpapapray ako dito sa victory group leader ko. Baka mas ano intend siya. Hindi rin po, ganun. Because He came here and it was fulfilled that the Messiah came and actually we witness or the people back then witness how humble He is Diba? Ano yung mga lumalapit sa kanya? Tax collector, mga mga kasalanan. Tinanggap niya yun. How much more tayo? Now let's continue. And in verse 3, a bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick 
he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. I like this. Alam nyo po yung, yung read, di ba? Yan, kagaya niyan, read yan, di ba? Hindi, read yan, okay? Ano po yan, uh, kapatid po ni James read yan. Hindi, okay? Alam niyo yung panahon na, yung iba din na makarelate. Mga millennials lang po yun, yung iba sa atin millennials. But seriously, yung Bruce read po, okay, before the Bruce read, sabi dyan, and the burning wick. Two pictures that Isaiah used to describe the ministry of this servant. And to give us a picture, parang ganda po yung ano, yan po yung Bruce Reed. Sa panahon kasi, kasi natin ngayon, ah, hindi, pasalang naman yan, okay lang yan. Pero the heart of Isaiah when he was writing this, when he was prophesying this, when he said, a Bruce Reed, it was broken and crushed. And during their time, pag broken na, they would step on it or they would just remove it kasi wala nang silbe. Wala nang purpose. Eh yung ito po yung, ano, yung, yung smoldering wick. Yung sa kandila, dahil before, di ba? Before, wala namang kuryente pa. So, nakalamp lang sila. So, yung smoldering wick, ibig sabihin niyan, yung, yung ubos na, yung, alam mo yung, wala na siyang apoy, yung kulay pula na lang, alam niyo po yun, tapos umuusok na lang siya. And normally, ang thinking natin, ah, wala na to, patay na to, tapo na to. Now, this is the picture of his ministry. Sa amin niya daw, yung a Bruce Reed, he will not break. And this smoldering wick, he will not snuff out. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya papatayin. Ibig sabihin, no matter how broken you are, no matter how bruised you are, no matter how you feel your, your uh, smoldering, parang feeling mo, wala na akong fire, wala na akong gana, parang hinang-hina ka na, hindi mo na maramdaman yung presensya ng Panginoon, Kabalik na po yung lahat yun. It's a lie. Why? Because yung ministry po ng Panginoon natin, He would treat you with mercy and gentleness. The Bible even says in Psalm 34 verse 18, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So ibig sabihin, not only He came here in humility, but His ministry, He would set things right by treating us mercifully. May awa po ang Panginoon. And aren't you glad? Pag tinignan mo yung katabi mo, di ba parang, tingnan mo, okay lang yan. Huwag kang mahiya. Don't be shy. Yan. Kahit nag-away kayo kanina niya ng asawa mo, may awa ang Panginoon dyan. May mercy si God. And the Bible says, every morning, His mercies are new. You know why? Because the justice of God that he brings in this world is not just punitive but restorative it is redemptive hindi siya yung parang trigger happy lang patayin patayin or gawin natin to padala sa hell ito uh, paliparin mo angel ganyan ganyan hindi hindi siya yung nagpa-power trip to bring just punishment but his heart is to restore you and me to redeem you and me sa mga kasalanan na meron tayo. Kaya nga, if you remember the story in John 8, right? Anong sami niya dun sa adulterous uh, woman? Neither do I condemn you and go from now on, sin no more. Yung mga tao dun, pag merong nagkumit ng adultery, anong gagawin nila? Papatay nila. Stone to death. Bakit? Eh, hindi, dapat yun yung mustisya. Pag muha ka ng kasalanan, patay na kagad. Pero hindi eh. Ang sinasabi ng word ni God, yes, there's punishment to every sin that is committed. But what we need to understand in the eyes of God, more than just punishing us, He wants to restore you and me. Gusto niyang ayusin muna yung bawat isa. And we're about to end. I'm gonna call our, our keyboardist. And I remember this, this story that it was shared to me. I don't know if it is a legend, a uh, story na pinagpasa-pasa, pero ginawang ko na lang siya ng version. Okay, para mas modawa natin ito kasi sa 3 p.m. tag this version tayo dito, di ba? So there's this uh, two kids who would go to this uh, uh, place, yung field na bakante, na pagmamayari ng isang uh, uh, old, uh, old man. 
So they would play there. Nagalaro sila ng ano ng 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 baseball. So tuwan-tuwa sila, ganyan ganyan. So every time they would play there, yung 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 guy, makikita nila titingin doon. Tapos magi-smile lang naganyan, parang yung ganoon. So sila naman, okay, andiyan yung ito na naman yung 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 guy na to. Parang minsan inisip na, weird ata, di ba? Parang, ano ba to? Galit ba to? Gusto pa tong palsin tayo nito. As in every time they would play there, ang saya-saya nila. Tapos sa labas naman yung guy. Kasi ganoon. And then one day, pagbat mong isa, sobrang hindi niya na-control, it went to the window, yung bintana nung, nung mama. Basag! Tapos natakot sila, syempre, di ba? Na-experience nyo yun, nung bata kayo, nabasag mo yung paso ng lola mo, or I don't know kung na nabasag mo. Alam mo yung feeling, hala, lagot tayo. So ginawa nila, nagtinginan sila, tinignan nila, habang wala pa, come on, run, takbo tayo, tago tayo. Feeling nila, akala nila, hindi nakita. And then one day, they were in the supermarket, and then they saw this guy. Hala, siya yun. Nagkatitigan sila. So ang ginawa nila, tumakbo kagad sila. Tara! Tapos sinabol po sila ng guy. So inabol sila, nagabulan sila, akala, snatcher sila, hindi, 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 okay sila. Until na corner nung guy yung, yung dalawang bata. Tapos sabi ng nung dalawang bata, no, it's not, it's not us, it's not us. Wala pa kagad guilty na, di ba? Hindi ako yun, hindi ako yun, alam mo yun. Parang yung anak mo nagmuha ng kalokohan sa bahay, ba? hindi ako yun. Eh hawak mo yung pen, nagsulat ka sa ano, di ba? Bakit ganun? Guilty. And then the guy said, shh, 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 shh. I want you to go with me. So sinama niya bata, so yung dalawa, takot at takot. Ah, ano meron? Ba, aalay na ba tayo, di ba? Para dadali na ba tayo sa presinto? And to their amazement, di nila sila dun sa bahay. Pinakita, oh, ito yung nabasag nyo. Salamin. Okay na, di ba? Yes. Nagkasala kay sa akin. Pero it's okay. You don't need to run away. Actually, because I'm a old man na, and I'm just alone here every day, I enjoy seeing you play. Actually, makikita niyo akong ganyan, lalabas-labas ako, pero pag nandun lang ako sa bintana, pinapanood ko lang kayo, and I enjoy it, watching you guys play. And when I think about that story, I believe it's, it's our story as well. God has been wanting us to enjoy itong creation niya from the very beginning. But because when sin entered this world, lahat ng bagay nagkaroon ng disorder, nasira lahat. Tapos ngayon, ang thinking natin, naku si Lord, ipapanish niya ako, yari ako, without even understanding that even before you approach Him, he already fixed the situation. And actually, He is calling you back, my son, my daughter. I just want you to enjoy again this place with my presence. I'm no longer condemning you. I'm no longer judging you. Why? Because I already sent my son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty of your sin to send a message that I'm gonna deal with you with my mercy, with my grace, and with my love. You've been running away from me. Nagtatago ka, thinking na maayos mo to, ayaw mong i-admit yung pagkukulang mo. But no, 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 no. My grace is sufficient for you. My love is so wide, so high, so deep, that there's nothing can separate us from that love that is in Christ Jesus. So it's not condemning you. It's not condemning us. And maybe I'm preaching to the choir this afternoon. But here's my message for all of us. Kung sinasabi natin kristyano tayo, na-experience natin yung pagmamahal ni Jesus Christ, I hope that the church should be a place where the bruised, the broken, and the smoldering would feel safe and secure. 
Sana po tayong simbahan. We are called to be the salt and the light. We exemplify this to this broken world. Hindi yung sasabihin natin na ikokondem natin yung nasa labas. Kaya hindi tayo naglalagay ng banner, di ba, na repent. Kayo mga makakasalanan, mapupunta kayo sa hell. Hindi natin gagawin yun. That's why we, we, we don't do, do, alam mo yun yung dati, ginagawa natin na, will you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Pag hindi, mapupunta ka sa hell. Pag mamamatay ka ngayon, saan kaya punta mo? Why? Because we want to send a message how Jesus did His ministry here. And don't get me wrong, yes, meron pa rin pong message about the judgment, about hell, about punishment. Pero tayo kaya bilang simbahan, bilang kristyano, sana yung message is, pagdating nila dito, or pag nakita nila yung buhay natin, di ba? Ah, I want to be part of that church. I want to worship the, the Jesus, the kind of Jesus that you worship. Bakit? Kasi totoong totoo. They don't feel judged. They don't feel condemned. Especially, they don't feel convicted. Minsan kasi, mas pinamumunahan natin yung Holy Spirit eh. Ah, hindi, mag-repent ka. Talikura mo to. Ito, kasalanan mo. Ito, to, 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 to. Tapos minsan, na ginagawa natin, pinoproseso natin. Di ba? Atin sa Victory Group, Bible Study Group. Siyempre, mag intro ka muna, warm-up question. Oh, kamusta, 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 kamusta? Mag-share to. Ah, oh, may problema ako dito. May sakit to, may sakit. Ah, okay, sige, sige. Oh, let's study the Word. This is what the Bible says. Minsan, kailangan lang natin maging sensitive and be aware na more than preaching to them, we need to connect and be merciful to them. Minsan, kailangan mo lang sarado. Ah, talaga ba? O oh, sige, pag-usapan natin yung anak mo. Paano ba? Pag-pray natin ngayon. Puntahan natin ngayon. We are so consumed with the works of the ministry and we forget the heart of the ministry. Hello? So, ibig sabihin, kung kristyano ka, nakikiusap po ako sa'yo, I'm urging you, exemplify this. Why? Because in this broken world, God would use our brokenness to send a message on how He can change a person from bo- broken to whole. Amen? Can we all stand? We're gonna end in prayer. With all heads bowed and eyes closed. Lord, we thank you, God, for this afternoon. And even as we have studied your word. In fact, Lord, hindi pa kami tapos, but Lord, I pray because even right now, God, you are speaking to us. You are ministering to us. Because more than finishing the preaching, doing the things in order, Lord, you are in control. So ask your people, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us. You know, with all its bowed and eyes closed, I just felt like God would want to bring healing to some of us here because of injustice, because of disorder. I don't know kung saan ang area ng buhay mo. Maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your relationship with your uh, son or your daughter. Maybe your business is, alam mo yun, parang falling apart. Or worse, maybe yung buhay mo mismo is falling apart. But let me tell you this. Hindi po aksidente yung naririnig yung message na to. Naniniwala ako, God appointed this time because He wants to tell you, hindi pa tapos ang lahat. Hindi kita susukuan. Nagsisimula pa lang ako. In fact, His word says, He just began a good work in us and He will bring it to completion. And He is just calling you to trust His leading so you can experience His fixing on how He would make things in order. That's why with all its bowed and eyes closed. Can you raise your hands if that's you? I want to pray for you. Alam mo lang na ang daming disorder sa buhay mo. Maybe it's your finances or maybe it's your health. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus 
even Lord, itong mga anak mo, their hands are lifted up high. I pray, God, for your presence to be upon them, even right now, God. I pray for your wisdom to be upon them. Wisdom, discernment, and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Naniniwala po ako, Panginoon, because they've already made that decision to follow you, Jesus, as their personal Lord and Savior. Therefore, they get to hear from your leading Lord. So even as you are ministering to them, Lord, I pray, God, for practical ways, Lord, on how you're gonna restore yung broken relationships, on how you're gonna fix yung, yung health nila, kung paano nila alagaan yung sarili nila, on how you're gonna free them, Lord, sa financial uh, debt, Lord. I pray and I thank you, God, as your people, God, that we would experience this liberty, this freedom from those disorders, Lord, of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You can put your hands down. Let's give God praise. One last prayer before we end. I just felt like, you know, calling this group of people. Hindi, marami pa po tayong oras. But some of you here, the starting point is you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Ibig sabihin po, hindi yung pagatin mo sa victory, yung, hindi yung pakikinig mo sa, sa preaching ng pastor, you just need to have that understanding na ikaw mismo, oo nga, no, Christian na ba talaga ako? May relationship na ba ako kay Jesus? Tinanggap ko na ba siya bilang Lord and Savior ko? Or this is just a head knowledge? Today, I'm gonna give you that opportunity. And I know, God has already spoke to you and gave you a revelation na oo nga, more than the things that I need to know, I need to do, the starting point is, Accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Take His leading, submit to His Lordship. Look and behold to this servant who takes away the sin of this world. That's why if that is you, can you raise your hand? No shame, no guilt. We're not condemning you. We're not judging you. Come on, praise God. Come on, keep it raised. Praise God. I see your hand. I see your hand. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Taas lang po. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Dun sa mga nagtataas ng kamay, you know what? We made this decision before and let me tell you this. Our life, yung mga buhay po ng karamihan sa amin dito, it was never the same again. Because the Bible says, for anyone who is in Christ, the old has gone and the new has come. That's why yung first step of faith po na gusto kong gawin natin ngayon is, can you just come here in front of the stage? I just want to challenge you to come here. Kung sinasabi mo, yes, I want to make that bold step of faith. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Dun po sa mga nagtas ng kamay, can you come here? Lapit lang po kayo dito. There's no shame here, no guilt here. And kaming mga nandito sa likod na nagawa na namin to before, we're gonna celebrate with you. Kaya pwede ba na silang palakpakan? I hope karamihan at sa atin dito, mga Kristiyano tayo, we don't get tired of seeing people surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if there's one sinner who repents, the heaven is rejoicing. And today, it's not just one. That's why today, we get to celebrate, we need to be grateful, we need to appreciate kung paano binabago ni God itong broken world. Come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Or maybe hindi mataas yung kamay mo, it's okay, just come here in front of this stage. Praise God. Praise God. Tingin po kayo dito. Praise God. Let me encourage you. Ibig pong sabihin dito sa decision na ginawa nyo, seryoso po ito. Ibig sabihin, you're gonna take this challenge to face yung reality ng mundo, ng buhay, ng meron kang Kristo, meron kang Jesus sa buhay mo. Bakit? I hope you won't see Jesus as a Savior na mag-aalis ng problema. Andiyan pa rin po yan. Mamaya pag mo sa bahay, nandiyan pa rin yan, nandiyan pa rin yung disorder ng buhay. Pero I hope we would see Jesus as our Savior who would help us overcome 
every testing, trial, problem, and struggle in life. Amen? Just pray with me. Just repeat after me and put this prayer into your hearts. Madalangin po tayo, Pakinoon. Maraming salamat sa pagmamahal mo para sa akin. Maraming salamat na pinadala mo ang nag-iisa mong anak na si Jesus para pagbayaran ang kasalanan ko. Ngayong araw na to, tinatanggap ko si Jesus sa buhay ko bilang Lord, Master, and Savior. Tulungan mo po ako mamuhay para sa honor mo at para sa glory mo. Ito po ang aking dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we give, give the people a round of applause? Praise God. Let's just end in prayer. Lord, we thank you, God, for this afternoon, Lord, even as we have praised you, worship you, and studied your word, Lord. I pray, God, that this will be real to us, Lord, that it won't end here, but even as we go back to our family, sa bahay namin, sa work namin bukas, I pray that we'll be able to exemplify this, Lord. I pray that we'll be able to live out, Lord, yung calling na binigay mo sa amin, Lord, because you've already begun a good work in us. You are already sanctifying us, changing us from glory to glory. Inaayos mo yung buhay namin at continue pa pong aayusin yung buhay namin. But Lord, I pray that it won't end sa amin, Lord. Nagamitin mo po yung bawat isa sa amin na magdadala ng change, Lord, dito sa mundo. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen.